Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action, Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. And today is Friday the 27th of July, the day of the opening ceremony for the Olympics London 2012. And I'm going to talk to you about weather developments in July, uh, what we expect to happen in August, especially involving the jet stream, and then we're going to have a little further discussion about the uh, debate on uh, man-made or not global warming. First of all, uh, during July we predicted uh, a lot of extreme events around the world, very extreme events. What we said about America, for example, was um, we went into a lot of detail, which has been verified. We'd see uh, some more cold air coming down at times in the northeast, some very intense storms in the northern and eastern parts and other parts, but most intense there, and uh, ongoing heat and drought in the centre, and um, complicated things, but sometimes some more forest fires in the, in the southwest. And all of those have been well verified, except I have to say the forest fires, sometimes we overrated what would happen, although we were very accurate about the end of June. Um, uh, so we're pleased with how America has developed and say that this severe heat and rainfall shortage in the center is going to continue. For Europe, we had a, uh, a good understanding of how the jet stream was going to be for most of the month. And uh, basically, it was going to be curved like that. So we won't go into complications. But it would have meant that it was going to be often very wet in the British Isles. And the low pressures would be often low pressures in Europe and very hot in East Europe. Um, with forest fires and so forth, and that has happened as well. And the uh, deluges in Britain uh, with hail and so forth have been uh, uh, extraordinary. What we said about Britain and Ireland was overall it will be extremely wet with widespread serious floods, damaging hail and winds with some tornadoes at times. And all of those things have been verified, and the dates, time windows of the tornadoes, give or take a few days, was also verified. And the details of what happened through the month have been very important, especially because of the Olympics, and we warned there would be deluges hitting the Olympic torch relay at times and said when. But basically very wet until, for, the, for most parts, until round about 24th, 25th of, of July, where we said, well, it would be quite drier certainly over the whole country and that has definitely happened uh, it's been a bit warmer in the south than we thought but the heat has been very concentrated in the south rather than the whole country and then we said this dry bit would end on the 27th of July which is today and there we are so we're also warned and Boris Johnson noticed this uh, when he <laughs> wrote about us in the um, Daily Telegraph, uh, we warned that this could mean deluges, thunder and so forth on the uh, parade uh, itself on the day. But the important thing is we're here now, there is rain in London now, uh, where we said, when we said, to, down to the day. What was going to happen after this is there will be further periods of heavy rain during the Olympics. Very important things are going to happen to the jet stream and consequently the general track of low pressure systems during August. Um, what we're saying is that uh, this is meant to represent the jet stream, right? Or, or if you like, we could simplify and call this is the average track of low pressures. And we've had recently low pressures coming through England like that, from somewhere up there or over here. And, this time of year, normally, you'd expect them to go uh, at the top, like that. Um, uh, we have them dashing through England instead, and Wales. Um, and what's going to happen in August, we think, is quite surprising. 
instead of reverting up to here, which they have done briefly for a few days basically, the whole jet stream is going to go way south and we're going to have low pressure systems tracking into Spain in the Mediterranean and high pressure to the north. Now, this is going to be fine weather, but it's not the normal summer fine weather. Because fine weather. Well, cooler fine weather, certainly. It'll be sunny and it'll be quite nice, but it's not, not the normal summer fine weather. What we're expecting in August is that the track of low pressures is going to carry on like this, largely through England and Wales, for the first... 17 days of August. So that means trouble for the Olympics. There'll be more re deluges, rain, interruptions and so on. Which is not, not good for sprinting in at all, for example. But then around about the 19th of August, there's going to be a decisive change and the, the track of lows is going to switch to even further south. Which is not a normal type of summer weather at all in Britain. It's going to be dry and it will be often cold nights and warm sunny days. But, but uh, it'll be summer but not the, the type of thing that people expect. Now I dare say the global warmers will try and pass this off as a great return to, to warmth but not at all, not in the normal sense. This is a return or an even more extreme little ice age circulation pattern. And bear in mind what I've said, we're talking about northeast winds, okay, <laughs> over the British Isles. If this was a winter event that went on for a while, and we expect this to go on all through the rest of August, at least 10 days and into September, if that was happening in winter, we would have an extraordinarily cold winter burst. This would be continuous northeast winds, Siberian air, coming for, you know, two weeks or so. And that is a bit like what happened in 1739 to 1740, for example, which was one of the coldest winters. So actually, it was after the Little Ice Age, but a kind of reflection of what had happened. It's just there's a lot of records about it. There was three weeks of continuous frost in southern England, according to church records. Just an example. So that type of circulation is about Little Ice Age type reappearances. So to summarise what we're saying about August is low pressures and wet for the first 17 days in British Isles and then generally dry with cold nights, sunny days, nice weather and if you want more details of course the full details including what will happen at Bank Holiday are available on our August forecast. So now we're going to talk about the state of climate wars. The debate which is completely unnecessary because CO2 is having no effects on climate. But recently there's been a lot of talk about Greenland melting and it being the warmest ever. Well, this is actual nonsense because the records they talk about are 30 years long. So even if, 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 even if it is the warmest in 30 years, it doesn't tell you much at all. There's disputes about what they're actually measuring anyway and whether they're accurate measures, but that apart, the reason why Greenland is called Greenland is because it was green when the Vikings discovered it in the medieval warm period, the early medieval warm period. So, the claims that recent changes in Greenland mean anything in terms of CO2 are delusional nonsense. Okay. What is really going on with climate now is that the jet stream is on average being pushed south and showing wild fluctuations which are the sort of things which it showed during the little ice ages of the Maunder Minimum, minimum of solar activity around the late uh, 1600s and the Dalton Minimum around the early 1800s and then we had Big hail events, for example, which we're having currently now. You had big, big fluctuations of temperature as well. You had, for example, March this year was average cold in the Northern Hemisphere, but really hot in the USA and warm in Britain. They're little extremes in a opposite to a general extreme the other way. And 
August this year is going to be see similar contrasts around the world. Now, as this continues, we, you see you're going to have these low pressures further south. Now, the low pressure systems on the southern end are drawing winds which pull the uh, sea currents with them. So the Gulf Stream of air, of, of water, currently, basically, when it goes up towards Scotland, Iceland, Greenland, that, after a few more years of little ice age trends, is going to start being dragged further south. And you'll have a, there's a, anyway, the Gulf Stream splits into two, and some of it goes towards Spain. So a lot more of it will go towards Spain and less goes up there, so that'll exacerbate the cooling and we'll get into a proper little ice age then, which will be, we don't quite know when, but 2025, 2030, maybe earlier. Um, but generally we'll be in a colder period and agriculture will have a lot of problems. There'll be uh, crops destroyed more often by hail, um, shorter summers, longer winters, occasional blasts of opposite all over the place, but generally very bad for agriculture and commerce. So any time you hear somebody telling you that what you see is to do with global warming, man-made that is, ask them for the evidence, point out there is no evidence, the only, only thing driving what they're putting forward the politicians seeking taxation and various people seeking funding for unnecessary research when really what we could be doing is applying modern most recent understandings of what the world is doing and use that to help uh, well save lives um, give better warnings of, of, of storms and of course uh, improve agriculture by adapting to what is going to happen. What I'm going to do now is show you a graph which illustrates clearly the misinformation being put around to support the theory of man-made climate change. The upper graph here is a set of data sets of world temperatures assembled at the University of East Anglia and sponsored by various world organisations. The problem with these data sets is they change the stations they're looking at as time goes on. The oldest data set here, which was uh, made in 2008, uh, shows it's a green one, or it's a black one as well, there's a green one, which shows um, a certain temperature in the past and a warmer temperature recently. Then, 2008, 9, 10, they selected other sets of stations to give new data sets. And every time they produced a new data set, the temperature in the past goes down and the temperature now goes up. So they're just juggling around with data to select out the ones which favour their argument. Now this is Enroning economics or bank robbery or whatever you want to call it. It is not science. Okay? And what is really happening, and this is from satellite data, but it is generally accepted satellite data by all sides, that whatever argument you put at least for the last two years, probably for the last ten years, but this shows the last two years, world temperatures are declining. And our work shows they will continue to decline in general terms with fluctuations, but general terms for the next decade or two decades. Thank you.